Hey there, Pascal here again and today we're doing a little Final Cut tutorial. Some caller published a new video yesterday and this is about the Mavic Air. It's a bit like a commercial. I have the Mavic Air here too and I really love this drone. You can really bring it everywhere and the quality is amazing. And on the video from some caller, I saw some comments like some guys were like, oh, this transition at this and this time is so awesome. And so now I want to show here how to do that transition. It's actually quite easy to do, even if the transition itself is definitely awesome. So I would say let's watch the intro now and then we will go into Final Cut and I will show you how to do that. My name is Pascal Basel and in 2015 I quitted my job to escape the rat race and travel the world. While doing that I rediscovered my old passion for filmmaking and learned to fly drones. Now I make videos of the most beautiful places in the world, be part of my adventures and learn how to make cinematic travel videos. So the transition that I'm talking about is that one here. It's flying and as you can see at first you have like this ocean here and you can also see that in this area there's still the ocean here is it blue and there's blue you get closer to it there's still blue and now when I do it a bit slower you can see that suddenly there's not the ocean anymore there's actually a desert from the next clip so here's a very nice transition Scroll it again, so here you can see the ocean and then it transition, transitions to this desert here. This transition is so awesome because you can really not see anymore where the other clip starts. It's so good, but it's also very easy to do. So we will go into Final Cut now and I will show you exactly how it works. So I will choose for a point where I can cut the clip so that we can start our key keying here and I want to have much bright areas in here to make it a bit easier to show now and then we will start here so this are our two clips like I have this clip here like usually like the original clip that some caller had goes of course a bit farther where onto the tree here and that's actually where the real transition happens but like the technique that I will show here is exactly the same even if you cannot make the transition completely to the end but you will at least see how it works. So I want to do here at first is I want to cut out a bit of that clip here. So and what's also important here when filming or when choosing the clips that you want to transition here into is that both clips have the same direction where you fly the drone. So as you can see here in the first clip the camera moves simply forward, easy movement, and in the second clip it also moves forward, so in the same direction and probably not with exactly the same speed but with around the same speed. I mean you can also adjust it a little bit in post, but that's important because then it definitely looks better because it looks more fluid like when like the camera goes into the other clip. Or flies into the other clip in that case. So now I had cut it this part out here. Looks a bit weird now. <laughs> okay and I will drag that part over the first clip and then I will make a copy of this first clip and I will drag it above all the, the both the first clips that I have here now. And I will deactivate the bottom clips with pressing V. And now we will want we want to set a draw mask. So this is because we will key it out later, like that part here. But the keying affects the highlights, and here are also highlights of the pillows. But we only want to affect the highlights of the sky here, right? So we need to cut that part here out, and then we can key it. So the way how I will do that now, I will make the mask a bit bigger because that's a bit easier later then for us. Uh, so I do it like that. Okay, now we draw it and the problem here is that we need to animate it. I don't like to animate mask, but it has to be done. Put in the hard work. Okay, so I will make it a bit bigger even. And up, yeah, it's great. 
What I will do now, I will move one keyframe forward and then I will adjust the mask keyframe by keyframe. Yes, it is a lot of work, but you need to do that. So, at least when you, if you want to get great results, right? So, make that a bit bigger here. I make it bigger because you will also need to draw another mask for the bottom clip later and that will make it easier. So, move one keyframe more forward. Okay, and that was it. So we got our mask here now. And now I will activate the bottom clip and we'll draw around the same mask here. I can animate it backwards if I want to. So I'll also set the draw mask here to that clip and put in my control points and I will draw inside the mask here. Can I do that completely but as good as possible? Okay, that's great. And now I need to animate that too. And it's important here that we stay inside the mask that we draw before, that's why I leave that mask on or that clip and now it's exactly the same moving one frame backward draw the mask inside and this is actually a bit easier because with most of the points here don't really we don't really need to be that perfect here so you won't see that later okay. Okay, so now we got that here and when I activate the bottom clip and you can see looks pretty good on deck before but here in one area I think I was able to see the mask a little bit. Yeah, yeah, make it a little bit bigger, bigger there. there. It's important to make sure here that you can't see the mass, otherwise it would just look bad. So that looks good for me now. And what I want to do now is I want to key that part so that only in that part this video here becomes visible at the start of the next clip. So I will apply a luma key to that clip here. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to move the luma roll off to the right because that makes it easier and this will change the curve here. As you can see here, it's now straight this line and when I adjust the luma roll off, it becomes like a curve. And then I will move that to the right and that to the left. And now when I bring that here to the left, that slider, you can see that change here, that actually the clip changes there. You can see here now it's all blue and now it changes. That means that the mask is being applied. So move it around here. And in that case it already looks pretty good. As you can see. And now with that here you can already see that we got like this next clip here. So it changed. And I mean in some clips it could be a bit more difficult and then you have some other tools here like usually sliding with that playing around can work pretty good. You can also make the mask smaller or like bigger as you can see here but that's totally weird in this example now. Okay, and of course, like right now you see that this change here happened too fast, like bam, suddenly the, the background changes the sky and that doesn't look that good. So what I want to do here is to simply blend it over. Okay, and what I also want to do, like you can see here this weird line, this is because of our mask. So here is like the opacity of the mask and I will set it to 100 here, go 
Oh no, let's go one frame forward, 100 here, one frame backward, zero here, and then you can't see that mask anymore, so it stops looking weird. Okay, and because of our transition here now, you can see that it doesn't change so fast. I mean, in the actual video of some call, it changes even slower, so it's less visible. And so we can stretch the mask a little, uh, the transition here a little bit. Oh, that works good. And now you can see it slowly changes in the background. And now you got it here, right? That's awesome. Easy, of course. In the real video, like the first clip, the drone moves further. We can have another look at that here. Let's just copy that clip and stretch it a little bit to show that again. And as you can see here, the drone moves far farther. And that's why you have the full transition now. But I cannot do that here right now because I don't have such a huge movement. And the Luma Kia wouldn't work that good here anymore because here we already get like this pretty dark areas of the second clip here and if I would cut that out now then we wouldn't get great results here because it would also key out that part so that wouldn't work and but I think you got an understanding of how it works like usually if you would do it exactly like that here but you just have a clip like that where the drone flies until this tree here this plants then you would get exactly the same effect, like exactly the same transition when you do it like that here. So some caller must have done that around like that. And I really like this transition. And I mean, this example here that really shows how easy it is. I mean, filmmaking and so on, at least today, is not really anymore about having the best technical skills or something, because everything became very easy with Final Cut and Adobe Premiere especially. But what's important today is the creative side so you need to have the creativity in your brain so that you see such things and you start doing that so I mean some caller is a guy that I, I don't know him by, by myself but I think he's an extremely creative guy he sees such things and he knows exactly when he can make such transitions he uh, of course he will also have a lot of footage he probably shots like 10 times or more or much more actually of the footage that he shows in the video so he has a lot of clips to choose from and then it's all about his creativity to bring those clips together so that he can make such such transitions and what's also important is to know that if you want to create a quality like that or transitions like that then you need to be willing to put in all this effort actually the video that I showed last week it's actually a pretty similar tutorial also with masking combined with luma keying so for uh, increasing the dynamic range of the Mavic Air or other drones a little bit uh, with replacing the sky basically. And one guy were commenting there, oh that is so much effort for one clip. Well, I mean that's exactly how it works, right? If you want to become successful and produce something that people, that make people say wow, then you have to put in a lot of effort. I mean, let's have a look at football players, for example, as a world championship right now. If you want to come to that level, then your fucking complete life is all about football. There's nothing else anymore. And you have to put in all the effort. You have to train like, I don't know how much they train, maybe six times per week or something. And this is exactly the same as video. If you want to make your videos stand out and you want to become successful in that field, especially with travel videos, because... Like there are a lot of places to film and so on. It's not that uh, like everyone can do that basically. And if you want to stand out there, then of course you have to put in more effort than other people. That's exactly how it works. And I think a lot of people don't get it. Like on some of my videos, like the average video that is like three to five minutes long, I usually edit there for around eight to 10 hours, I would say. And like I recently published a backpacking in Thailand video this is around 15 minutes long. It took me around 40 hours to cut that video with color correction, with transitions and all of that. So, I mean, I, I really love this video personally. And this, I would actually say, when you put in so much effort and you, then you're so proud of the result that you love it even more. And that makes it so worth it. So I would always go for quality instead of going for like, 
uh, doing the most videos and stuff. And I mean, if you watch Ken Sam Calder's channel, then you can actually see that he didn't publish so much videos actually, he's far away from being a daily or weekly vlogger or something. But his videos are so great that he made half a million subs, right? And that's just because of the quality and putting in all the work. So I really love that and I'm definitely willing to put in all the effort and I also love to teach people how to do that. So that's why I publish two videos per week right now, like one Sunday video that's usually a bit bigger, like with traveling and so on. And one video like that here, usually on Thursdays, this time on Wednesday, because I want to bring it out fast where I just do some tutorial stuff. So if you want to see more of those videos, then please hit the subscribe button now and see you in the next one.